back, folks. This is Jacob Schubert filling in for Tom O'Brien. Of course, the May 7th Tom O'Brien Show. Uh, take a little journey with me, guys. Okay, We're over here at TFNN.com. All right, we have everything on the front page here. Larry Live uh, Trading Fridays. The next one is this Friday, May 10th. You do not want to miss that. Of course, Tiger's in Trading Room. But what I really want to show you is we navigate over here to newsletters. What we see here on the second row is the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. Now, Basil releases uh, a new publication of this every day, and uh, he also has um, very good overviews on the weekend as well, so you really get a good bang for your buck on this. Uh, additionally, some of these services, when you subscribe, you get access um, some of the old uh, webinars that he has here. Right over here, we have this webinar now for Basil Chapman Live Trading December 15th webinar archive. Now, that one, uh, you know, you have to get access to. Regardless, the newsletter comes with a bunch of goodies, and it has uh, very good insights uh, from Basil Chapman. Now, Basil, uh, are you with us? I am, certainly. Hi, Jacob. How are you? Doing well. How are you doing, Basil? I'm well, thank you. I'm certainly actually very well now that we've got very summery weather. I love that. Yeah, well, it's getting super hot here in Florida, but uh, ideally, I'm actually going to be up in Massachusetts uh, sometime next month, so hopefully I can enjoy oh. and some of that weather. So going to Salem. Good. So we'll see oh, what happens. Salem. Yeah, just nearby. Very good. It's a pretty place, Salem, yes. Absolutely. So, Basil, what are we taking a look at right now today? So I'll do a couple of things here. Uh, first of all, there's a, there's a technique that I developed a long time ago where I look, I think of the market, especially when you're getting uh, lows in the market that are accompanied by very negative news. Mm -hmm. And I tend to, did I just hit the, oh, don't tell me, I was about to show you something and I hit the wrong button. Let me just see if I can get this real quickly. Um, windows, 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 JD, JD, JD. I don't know if this is going to be it. Let me just try and see if that's it. No, it's not. Okay, what I was going to show you is um, a technique that I developed a long time ago that I call the, uh, it's, it's like, you have an earthquake, and then you have the aftershock. Sure. Sometimes the aftershock is much less than the earthquake. Sometimes it's even more. So I like to look at the markets. I can't show you that chart now. It's my yellow. I'll do it in my show tomorrow for uh, my Tiger Technician's Hour at 10. I won't be able to find it right now. I hit the. Um, I made it smaller, so now I can't find it. But what I wanted to show is that in a technique that I developed that I call the dark news cloud cover. I used to call it the dark news cloud cover, but now I just call it the dark news index. And what it says is that every once in a while, there is such heavy, a, a preponderance of bad news, but the market doesn't really, it just ignores it. And then suddenly it grabs that information, same information yesterday, and all of a sudden today it becomes really important. So what I look at is when we make tops, you can sometimes get what I call an internal high, and then it make a kind of a cup formation with a retest, and you make the residual high. And that's the exact same thing that you can do at lows. And in this particular instance, the low that was made on the 17th of um, April in the Dow, 37,753, that was retested. So you got an internal low, and then you got a, a residual low. It's like this H pattern that I always talk about. And at that particular point, the market started moving up very nicely. So I, I want you to, I haven't got that chart, it's a pity, but I'll do it in my show tomorrow. Mm. It's a yellow background. This is not the yellow background that I wanted to show. But within this context, what I wanted to point out was um, there is a technique that I use for, I've used it really for a very, very long time. It's we're looking at the nine period moving average and the 14 period moving average. If it, the nine period goes over the 14 period moving average, I change the color to green. And when it flips to negative, it goes pink. Well, on November the 3rd, that uh, that line went green in the Dow. This is the daily Dow. Look, it held, held, held. And just recently, around the 4th of April, it went pink. And it's been pink ever since until a few days ago. And now it's gone green again. So within that context, what I want you to show is this chart here of the Dow. And we've been along the Dow for a long time. Um, and we're looking at this rally. I have a technique that I look at that's a cup formation, and then I choose a particular candle, a particular bar, and I draw in a green down the way up. I draw a dash green line, and that is called the Chamber Wave Inside Wedge Target 
resistance line. And look today, it went just, yesterday it went right to the line. Today it went just above, and now it's slightly below the line. And here the target is, in the Chapman Wave, we're always looking for a buy signal that's upgraded to a buy mode. I believe today that we've gone from a buy signal that I'm probably, I don't, I have to wait for four o'clock, but it's probably going to be upgraded to say we should go to at least four higher peaks. So that's the Dow. But now this is even more interesting because if you look at the um, weekly chart, that nine period moving average would cross positive back in uh, November. It's not even close okay. yet to turning down. So that's a really bullish sign. So this cup formation that we're looking at right here in the, uh, the weekly chart is forming, but it hasn't gone very high. And I'm anticipating, this is just an anticipation. I like to sort of have, a, have a, a schematic at the back of my mind. It doesn't have to follow that, but at least I've got the parameters that I'm looking for. And I'm anticipating that this rally goes in the Dow to a daily to a D, and it gets there maybe by next week. And then I think we've got to be a little careful because there could be a little bit of a weakness, and that's the weakness that's going to be very important. Does that green nine period moving average in the daily in the weekly chart go negative? So far, everything's positive. The monthly is very positive. It's only at a peak C. And remember, I said a buy signal upgraded to buy mode should go to at least a D. So this is still very positive for 2000. And 24. Now, what's really interesting is the IWM, the Russell 2000, and it's so fascinating to see. Look, the IWM is the Russell 2000. Look at this monthly chart. It's really, I mean, from the high of 244.46 back in November of 2021, slumping down to the 160s, and it's only here. It's got a long way to go to get to the all-time high. And yet the IWB, that's the Russell 1000, was at an all-time high just recently. Look, all-time high. And yet the IWC, which is the micro caps, is very much like the, uh, it's like the Russell 2000. It's actually even weaker. So what for subscribers, we actually went long a few days ago um, at, at about uh, 200, uh, 200, just on 200. And um, we're anticipating that it's going to at least attempt to, to be a little bit of a leader, which it hasn't been for a long time. And you can even see today it's up 0.38%, and the Dow is only up 0.08, and the S&P is up 0.11, and the QQQ is up, I think it is uh, 0.09, So this, for the very first time, it's kind of leading the pack. Now, that doesn't mean just say, oh, it's going to keep doing that. But look how nicely it turned around here with the green nine period moving average in the weekly chart. Right here, it's a little, I think you can say, yes, you can. Um, it could have turned pink. In other words, it could have gone under the 40, which would be very negative, but it hasn't. It's still held very steady. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that there's a chance that if we can close, if not we, the IWM, the Russell iShares, this is the Russell 2000 small caps, if it's at 205.31 right now, if it's able to get to 207.80 or 208.30 this week, I'd like it to be this week, then there's a really good chance that over the coming uh, week and a half, we can get closer to the 211.88 high of March. And that'll be really important. Fantastic, Basil. We will see you tomorrow at uh, 10 a.m. Eastern. That's right, huh? Yep. Thank you so much for coming on, Basil. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Jacob. See you tomorrow. Folks, we'll be right back.